En we zijn weer terug vanuit de Kromhouthallen in Amsterdam. De hele dag zenden we uit uh, vanaf de Emers ID, waar we de interessante gasten van het podium direct doorkrijgen om hier uh, met ons te praten. Uh, je kijkt live via Facebook of via Emers. En natuurlijk als je achteraf dit nog een keer terug wil kijken, kijk je dat via ons YouTube kanaal. Um, hi, welkom. Uh, where are you and, and what do you do? Hello. Um, my name is Mia Mabanta. I run product and brand marketing at Quartz, uh, the media company based in New York. Right, so Quartz, tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so Quartz is uh, a digitally native uh, global business media brand. We started in 2012 um, sort of as, the, as mobile was starting to overtake desktop usage. And so a lot of our philosophy is around how can we design the news experience that's native to devices. Right. If you could just hold up your microphone a little bit more because uh, Sorry it's a bit that. noisier. So, um, so Quartz was basically a, a new kind of uh, a publication that, that used mobile first. Uh, um. Yeah, the idea is that uh, mobile is certainly the biggest expression of the change, but you know, technology has been changing at an ever increasing rate, and so. Uh, our habits as consumers have been changing as well and journalism is, has been traditionally one of those areas that ha maybe hasn't evolved as quickly so the idea is to really rethink how news and high quality news at that can really thrive in a digital era. Right and, and almost no publisher uh, knows how to do that but you do so what's, <laughs> what's the secret? I wouldn't say that. Um, you know, I think I think I think the the best publishers at it are ones who are just trying new things and kind of questioning the assumptions that they make when it comes to how people consume news. So, for example, uh, very few people actually go directly to a news homepage anymore. No. They're, yeah, you know, you wake up in the morning, you don't get up and type no. in you know the, the URL anymore. Uh, you go on a social feed or you check your email. And there you'll find your news links, and then from there you'll go. So, so the whole the whole idea is to not just kind of rest on long-standing assumptions about how people are doing that. No. Yeah. So, and how, how do you do that? How do you figure these kind of things out? Do you do you experiment a lot? Have you? Um yeah. Yeah, a lot of it is in, in experimentation. Uh, we've tried to set up our company as a, certainly a media company, but also a very product-focused company. So. Um, our head of product is also uh, one of our senior editor or executive editors. Uh, so you know it's really trying to merge these worlds and think about uh, the product of journalism not as an article that's you know 500 words long, but uh, what it is the entire experience like for the person uh, seeing it on the other side of the screen. Right. So a lot of it is uh, building technical expertise and building. A product organization, and a lot of it um, might sound fluffy, but a lot of it is in the culture of the organization. And you know, how can we create people uh, this culture of people who uh, think about the whole experience, not just whatever one part they're working right. on? And it's quite impressive because uh, all of a sudden you were there, uh, uh, and, and uh, there's a lot of brands that were uh, have been around for ages. But, yeah. but how are all the sports now? Uh, so we are just we just turned four actually, right. yeah. Uh, so we're fairly fairly new still, but definitely in that toddler stage where we're just about 200 uh, staff across the world. We're we've got many more global staff now than we had when we first started out. So things have been yeah things have been going well. Right. Was was that a difficult thing to to uh, to globalize or was it and was it a plan from the start or? It was definitely a plan from the start. So the, the sort of um, observation that our founders had made was that you know, when it comes to high quality global uh, news about the economy, there, there are some really great um, publications. You know, uh, the Economist and the Financial Times are excellent in, ter in terms of their journalistic quality, uh, but you know, these are storied institutions who have a certain way of doing things, especially back in 2012. Right. And so certain authority as well. Yeah, sure. And so we, as a new brand, you know, this with this weird name, uh, Quartz, which we chose intentionally we didn't want to be a, a times or a yeah. journal we intentionally wanted to be this sort of like weird sounding brand that we could actually grow into I thought it was because you could have a really really short URL well, that was a nice benefit <laughs> too yeah yeah 
So, um, um, but you were talking about international growth because uh, um, coming from one country to grow internationally, you, you will meet a lot of uh, uh, different cultural differences, uh, different interests for different kind of news and, and content. How did you deal with that? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, so well, I guess to kind of f follow up my last point, um, excuse me. Uh, so we believe in, in a world that's increasingly post-national. So if you think about you know, what technology's done for us. It's made us all more connected in terms of, you know, me based in New York, uh, as someone who has a global perspective would be quite interested actually in what's happening in, you know, the, the, uh, the energy market in China, even though I might not ever work in that particular industry. It's this just post-national mentality where business is just moving faster and faster across mm -hmm. um, national, international boundaries. And so the idea is that, you know, Certainly cultures are, have a lot of differences between them, but among this group of people, post-national um, you know, professionals who want this global perspective, uh, there's actually a lot in common. And that's what we try to pick up on, is that you, know, you might be from different cultures, but you're just fundamentally really interested and curious about the world. Right. Yeah. yeah. Although you see another trend in the world, and that is that people are uh, on the opposite. What's that? Well, the people are, are. There's also movement of people the uh, going the opposite. They're more like very nationalistic instead of uh, oh, yeah. uh, very very. Is, is that a, is that a target area you just do not talk to, do not reach? Is it just a different group? So you know, I, I would say that our sort of core persona reader, uh, reader persona is that is that post national is that person with a right. post national mindset, just generally curious about the world, seeking a sophisticated understanding. Um, uh, Given that, though, you know we're an open platform, right. so we, we like to say that every story that we write ha starts with an audience of zero in a way, and that it has to kind of go, you know, go find its audience right. and get shared, and right. it has to reach that level of quality. Right. So, you know, we'll, we'll take we'll take anyone who finds a given story interesting yeah. and additive to their lives. Right. One of the, the, the challenges of online publishing uh, um, is obviously how to monetize uh, uh, the content. Yeah. So, how, how do you do that? Yeah, that, that, uh, so I've been, I've been speaking all day about this, actually, and, and having some really interesting conversations with people here about it. You know, I think, I think the ecosystem <laughs> sorry, of media has uh, suffered a little bit from not being able to keep, keep up with uh, the rapid expansion of technology and what you and I have come to expect as users of those technologies. And so... You know, no one, no one specific institution's uh, fault necessarily, but you have this advertising ecosystem that doesn't doesn't really even take into account what it might be like for someone who opens no. up a website and gets you know hit with all these advertisements. Right. You have to click before. away. Exactly. Yeah. So, so how, what, how, the way we're trying to do it is to not chase after that immediate uh, gain, but actually you know take the time and like I said. You know, ha try to take, undertake a more product-oriented mindset around things, where right. you know we start with a blank blank page and design the entire experience, not just with what goes inside of a box. Right. And we found that advertisers are responding quite well, actually. Right. Uh, especially now, four years in, we've had you know not 90 percent of our uh, clients return to do business with us. So it's a really good testament of our efforts. Right. And and, and then it's focused on native branded uh, uh, content. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, you know, I think branded content can be a, a jargony term, right? And has it has its it's fraught with all of its own sure. issues. And I think I think this this too is an is an interesting point in media where, or point to make about media where, uh, for some reason, we're so obsessed with uh, formats. So, so native advertising is a format. There's great native advertising, and there's also just terrible native advertising. Right. Same as billboards, same as banners. Same as content. Same as, same as and yeah, content, exactly. And so, and so, uh, right, and that seems obvious, right? But I think too much of the, too much business is still done uh, being so focused on, you know, what's the next flashy format that I can put my logo right. on, and not enough about what is this content experience doing for the humans right. that I'm trying to reach. Right. So, you're talking about the, the next big flashy thing, but what, what do you see as, as trends and as new things that are happening in your field of expertise? Yeah, so, uh, well, there's, there's the flashy things, of course, that everyone's kind of talking about, <coughs> sorry, and then there's the, there are some bigger opportunities that uh, I think it's important for us to stay focused on. So, in terms of the bigger opportunities, uh, you know, 
Yeah, well, we're always experimenting with different formats. So we built out this amazing video team who's done, who's been doing a ton of great work on social and Snapchat and all that. Um, but you know, I, we think that there's still a lot more to be done when it comes to mobile news delivery. And we released an app earlier this year that is has a messaging interface, and that's become quite popular. Uh, but we only see, we see that as only one sort of way to, to to really deliver news in a really native to mobile way. And there's uh, so is, much is, more is, that can be done. Is a message? Can you message with the editor then? Is it, how, how does it work? In a manner of speaking, yeah. So, so it's on iPhone right now. It will, we're releasing an Android version soon. And you download the app, and it's 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 intended to very closely mimic uh, a messaging interface. So it looks very similar to iMessage uh, in terms of the colors. Right. Um, uh, but actually, uh, the content is is written by editors beforehand and delivered to the user, not in real time, but sort of in um, in spurts, if you will. So every right. few hours. Yeah. Right. And so we actually built. Uh, our own CMS content management system, so that editors can, you know, see what that experience is going to be like on the front end for the user. Okay. Do you see any other trends that are coming from outside of your industry? Or something you, you're wearing, uh, maybe uh, from wearables or uh, mm -hmm. Internet of Things kind of things that you say, okay, that could be interesting as well. I think all of it's really interesting. Um, you know, I think I think there's a lot that could happen in video over the next few years, and you know, certainly if you look at where brands, VR. VR brands and advertising are, are advertisers are experimenting. There's a lot to do in VR, AR. The New Yorker had some some fun AR covers um, earlier this year. Um, wearable, sure. Uh, you know the Snapchat uh, spectacles right. thing is interesting. Are we going but to see uh, uh, quartz uh, spectacles as well? I so I don't know about. Uh, maybe uh, our Snapchat is really excellent. Uh, okay. We do these things called Snap Charts that are you know little um, little uh, vignettes of how the global economy is doing that are great. But you know, like I was saying, I think formats will always be coming and going, and it's it's really it's really about finding your voice in each of those formats. So, right. one of our uh, best products, I think, and the one with probably the most loyal audience is our email newsletter which is about about as low tech as you can get these days but the content the content experience is, is really how did good it, how did that happen i mean the the, the 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 i thought email was out but all of a sudden the last few years email can completely came back so that's a special thing about uh content you know it's so with most types of technology that that are more tr transactional perhaps it's all about better faster flashier you know just stronger technology but when it comes to content media, that's that's a human and uh, sort of emotional experience, and so it it's not all about the technology platform. It's it's actually maybe even more more so about the the tone, the personality, the emotional experience that you're having with that product. Okay. And so even if it's just a really well written email, <laughs> okay, you well, know, it gets the job done. Congratulations. Well, and uh, thank you for uh, for talking to us here. Absolutely. Yes. We zijn weer terug vanaf de, uh, we zijn weer, we sluiten weer af met dit interview vanaf de uh, Kromhouthal in Amsterdam, waar we de hele dag uitzenden voor Emers uh, ID. Blijf kijken, we zijn straks weer terug met weer nieuwe gasten. En als je uh, dit interview terug wil kijken, kun je dat doen via ons YouTube kanaal.